Pentagon revelations about UFOs. The issue of unidentified flying objects known as UFOs jumped to the headlines again in June of 2021 when an unclassified Pentagon report was released, which should shed some light on some unexplained case histories. The word UFO has been ingrained in global culture for years, but over time it has proved increasingly unsuitable and polluted by the incredible amount of fakes in circulation. This is demonstrated by the adoption of the UAP terminology, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, which better defines these events, i.e. aerial phenomena that until now have no explanation. The word UFO undeniably refers to alien spacecraft that for some unknown reason would occasionally fly through our skies in an elusive way and without apparent logic. But it is a term that we should try to forget since it is misleading in substance and does not help to have an objective view of such phenomena. The phenomenon originates in the midst of time and we have found unknown events observed in the skies since ancient times. But what once may had no logical explanation, more often has been explained by science later on. Several examples could be made, but let's think for example of the explosion of the supernova SN1054, which starting from 1054 was observable with the naked eye for 23 days in a row, both day and night due to its incredible brilliance. There are also cave paintings by the Anasazi Indians portraying the incredible cosmic event. We also find descriptions of similar events in the writings of Roman historians such as Titus Livius and Tactius, but also Greeks as in the case of Diorius Siculus, who often speak of fiery spheres that furrow the skies or other apparent miracles, clearly attributable in most cases to the explosion of asteroids or to particularly scenic eclipses such as the annular ones. Let's think, for example, of a rather recent phenomenon such as that of the Chelyabinsk meteorite in Russia, where in addition to the great visual effect in 2013, it caused extensive damage to windows and structures. Of course, a writer in ancient times did not have the means to fully understand certain events and could only describe them in apocalyptic tones. The fundamental point is that we now know very well what it was. Does this completely rule out the UFO hypothesis? Absolutely not, but it tightens the field of investigation a lot. By now an aura of myth has been created around the subject and when we talk about Area 51, to give a striking example, we forget the nature of the US base within which new military technologies have been tested for years. Because in the imagination of all, that's the place the Americans preserve an alien spacecraft. Sightings have increased in recent years, but aerial technologies that can be misrepresented have also increased. Let's think, for example, of the growing number of both civil and military drones, able to deceive the less attentive and prepared eye. If we then go to see the types of sightings, we can almost notice an evolution between the spacecraft that were seen in the 60s and the more recent ones, where the design seems to somehow follow the dictates of the different eras, which makes most of the video circulating on the net lose a big amount of their credibility. One last observation. Have you ever noticed how bad the quality of the videos has always been? To date, there are no detailed shots of a UFO and not even the documents of the Navy seem to distance themselves from this trend, so it is legitimate to have doubts. But it is not a question of doubts about the existence of other non-terrestrial civilizations. Science has been saying this for years and, although we have no proof, just thinking of being the only inhabited planet in the multitude of galaxies and star systems in the universe, it's a gamble, but that's a very different story. It is therefore sensible to talk about UAP, since the link of the word UFO with the little green men seen in many science fiction movies is very rooted and misleading. While the phenomena of this awaited Pentagon report are aerial, not necessarily flying, but unknown. The definition therefore includes any environmental phenomena, technical problems of the equipment used like birds which go into aircraft engines, as well as the use of new technologies by foreign countries, for example China or Russia, or non-governing organizations or natural atmospheric phenomena like ice crystals, moisture or recreational unmanned aerial vehicles like drones. 
They can also include many types of debris, such as plastic bags. It is therefore clear that phenomena often occur in the skies which, if observed or filmed at great distances, have no explanation. Of course, when a Nebraska farmer talks about it, it has a weight. But if it is done by military personnel, things change because somehow it acquires that form of officialdom that makes most people exclaim, here, if the army talks about it, it means that's true. It is absolutely true, but once again, it must be remembered that the extraterrestrial explanation should be the last one to consider. Without going back to the 1960s and the first investigations into the phenomena, let's try to reconstruct the nature of the Pentagon report. All took its origin in 2007 when former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid decides to award $22 million in funding for an unclassified but not publicized Pentagon initiative called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. The goal was to study the various apparently inexplicable UAP cases and Luis Elizondo was leading the program. The operations were concluded in 2012, once the five years of the loan agreement had expired, but it was only known in 2017. The US government would not have stopped financing similar initiatives among them the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force, UAPTF, of which we have the first news starting from 2020. But let's go back to Luis Elizondo, who after the closure of the program and starting from 2017, joined a company called To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science. Small curiosity, inside we also find the former Blink-182 frontman Tom DeLonge. Also in 2017, Elizondo delivered to the media three videos that immediately became famous and what fueled the interest is the fact that they apparently came from military sources. But the doubt about the origin was completely removed in 2020. The US Navy confirmed the goodness of the videos. The three videos became part of the Freedom of Information Act document collection. After recognition by the Navy in 2020, Florida Senator Marco Rubio added a section to the funding bill in which it was made request to the Director of National Intelligence to work with the military to submit a report on the UAP phenomenon. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality. The short videos show a meeting from November 2004 and two dating from 2015. They are known by the nicknames Flair 2004 Go Fast 2015 and Gimbal 2015. The short sequences show pilots following seemingly unknown objects in the sky. However, in the Gimbal video, you can clearly hear the pilot speculate that the object could be a drone. Have you seen these videos? What do you think about it? Write your thoughts in the comments. But what information is contained in the nine pages of the report? The report considered 144 unsolved cases of sightings collected between 2004 and 2021, but it is specified that many of them are still being analyzed at present. Of these, one has been identified with certainty and it was a misinterpretation of what was essentially a sort of wandering deflated balloon, while among the remaining 80 were detected directly by the sensors of military instruments. It is important to underline that the fact that we speak of UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, Instead of the abused UFO, unidentified flying object, is a fundamental indication of the possible multiple nature of these sightings. We do not necessarily speak of flying objects, but of aerial phenomena that have no explanation, and continue to have no explanation. But there is a summary passage present in the nine-page report that clearly delineates everything. The limited amount of high-quality reports on unidentified aerial phenomena hinders our ability to draw firm conclusions about the nature or intent of UAPs. And it is confirmed once again that given the absence of clear case histories, human error of the tools, or an incorrect interpretation of the phenomena, it's still the first possible cause. In a limited number of episodes, UAP reportedly exhibited unusual flight characteristics. These observations could be the result of sensor errors or observer misperception and require additional rigorous analysis. And so it is true that in some cases these objects seem to move abnormally. The real question is, was something really moving? In this regard, some partial answers are provided in the types of sightings described. 
If the cases in which these objects move in an unusual way are limited, the report states that in most of the UAP events recorded, we are faced with physical objects, since they have been detected by multiple types of systems and sensors, such as radar, infrared, optical sightings, aiming systems, and finally, direct observation by sight. And this is a fundamental point that will need further clarification. Specifically, it is then stated that there are 18 cases in which unusual flight characteristics have been detected. For example, some UAPs appear to move into the wind, remain stationary, or abruptly maneuvered at considerable speeds, but with no recognizable signs of propulsion. In some sightings, the presence of associated RF, radio frequency signals, was even detected. For these types of UAP, the report tends not to be unbalanced, but the hypothesis is raised that it may be new technologies being tested by enemy states. However, once again, the conclusion is that further investigations by expert technicians will be needed to arrive at definitive answers. Then there is another detail that is pointed out and that is worth reporting. Although the data is too limited for a detailed analysis, the report states that many of the sightings were made near training camps and in test areas in the United States, and this could be linked to an incorrect interpretation of the data or most likely to glitches deriving from the use of the latest generation equipment, which are often tested during similar events. Therefore, the instrumental error and the misinterpretation are still at the forefront of the presumed causes. In practice, the report does not provide any of the long-awaited answers and once again never states that among these unidentified phenomena, there is the hand of some civilization from another planet. What emerges from the report is that more attention must be paid to UAPs because they could be dangerous for national security and for the involved military themselves, and as such they will have to be dealt with more rigorously. Indeed, the main concern is that some phenomena may actually be traceable to secret tests of hypersonic technologies by other countries. Hence the desire to investigate further whatever their nature, whether they derive from instrumental errors or suggestions, even more of the hypothesis that behind there are foreign military technologies should materialize. Therefore, the UAPTF hopes that further funding will be given for the creation of an in-depth study program of these UAP phenomena, involving expert technicians capable of providing definitive answers. To try to explain the nature of UAPs, it is thought to resort to an increasingly intensive use of artificial intelligence technologies to analyze and try to better understand some case studies. Artificial intelligence and machine learning would be used, among the others, by the Galileo Project, conceived by Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb. Its purpose is to build a network of high-resolution telescopes to gain a better understanding of UAPs and reach for a rational explanation. Among the telescopes of the network, there will be the future Vera Rubin Observatory, which will be located in Chile, whose primary purpose will be to take pictures of the entire night southern sky and study gravitational lenses and dark matter. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality.